All right, I think we've made our tweak on the back end and we should be good to go. Not sure if our players are standing by waiting for any kind of go ahead. It sounds like it's a little loud in there, so maybe we'll still need to wait for things to settle down. Um, but we do have that uh, round one matchup that we're very excited about. I see Axer Typo there in the chat who uh, is competing himself. So if you're wondering, well, hey, where's Axer Typo on the broadcast? He may appear as a player at some point. Um, we do have our coverage split this year between the Collins and NWL divisions. Uh, the full schedule is such that we're going to do it in chunks. Ben and I are going to take the first four rounds of the morning in the Collins division, and then we will flip over to NWL. So hopefully there's a little something for everybody, regardless of uh, the lexicon that you are most interested in. But for me, I'm going to be on board the whole way. I love all of the amazing players in both lexicons, watching them play. So hopefully you guys will too. Um, yeah, so, yeah, Ben, you won this tournament in the NWL Lexicon in 2018. That has to rank pretty high on your uh, accomplishments in Scrabble, given how strong this event always is. It's definitely up there. Um, and I wish I could commentate all of the games, but um, just didn't quite work out schedule-wise for me this year. I have plans this weekend, and I have to work on Monday. But... Um, look, I'm going to do my best to follow along. It is a great roster of commentators that we have as well. So we've got another former winner, Morris Greenberg, coming this afternoon. Um, tomorrow morning, we have uh, a player that uh, it has, I'm not sure if she's been to Crescent City that many times, but many incredibly impressive wins under her belt, Cecilia Lee. Then in the afternoon, we have former... Uh, North American champion Evans Clinchy and co-president of the Collins Coalition. And then to wrap it up on Monday, one of the absolute legends of the game from North America, Jesse Day, who has perhaps the most impressive resume of any North American player in overseas play. So we're not going to be hurting for expert analysis all weekend. So it's very exciting. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it's uh, there. The fields are both stacked in both divisions. It's uh, I'm excited. I'm very excited for this weekend, as I always am each year. So, um, yeah, Ben, you mentioned that playing against Dave Wiegand is a challenge that you like, that you relish. It's um, scary, but it's a little scary, right? <laughs> yeah, like he's so good. And I feel like he's even just gotten better over the past three years. Yeah, I think uh, there's there's some metamorphosis that Dave has undergone. I think he's always been known for his incredible word knowledge. Um, Dave is just uh, really limitless in his knowledge of the dictionary. I wouldn't put any word past him as far as him being able to find it over the board, which is really crazy. Nine letter words, 10 letter words. He'll, he seems that all, you know, it seems like all of those are within his reach. But to your point, it seems like in the past couple of years, he has diversified his playing style a little bit where he used to just continue to play aggressively almost no matter the situation. But now he has even improved on that too. So it's not clear to me that he has any weakness anymore as a player, which is a little disturbing when you're going up against him. Yep. It's, I've always tried to be an all rounder and the fact that he's trying to do that now is very scary. <laughs> all right sounds like the players are about to start so um yeah any minute now we're gonna pop on over to the game board and here we go robert robert lynn to give him credit I'm, um playing for many, many years. Um, if he gets the right letters, the right words, the right time, he's capable of being anyone, including Dave. So we'll have to see what happens. 
Yeah, Bob, Bob Lynn, um, to, as you say, one of the most experienced Collins players. I think he was a very early adopter to switch over to that lexicon in this country. And uh, wow, Dave's got uh, quite the embarrassment of riches on his rack here. He's going to have to pick between those high scoring tiles to play. Uh, mm. We might we might get in an interesting word to start the stream yep. here. I think we are. Um, so, uh, yeah, once again, this is the UK English. You see it in the top center of your screen. Day one, round one, CSW. That's the lexicon we're using. And it wouldn't be Twitch if you weren't going to play a word like this. He plays jizz to start the game. This actually means a wig. It doesn't mean what you think. No, I have one um, of those. Yes, you do. <laughs> Which, uh, again, we're not on screen right now, but perhaps if you get it ready, it will be a fun surprise for people afterwards. Um, all right. So let's see if this works to get the score updated. Um, perfect. Wow. That was like seamless. Um, OK, so over to Bob. Um, three T's, not exactly what he wants to see, but he actually has kind of a nice play. Yeah. I I see what you're going for, Dotant. That's right, yeah. So, okay, so it's the right idea to underlap these nice high-scoring tiles in the J and the Z, but Bob had maybe a slightly better option here that would have used two Ts instead of just the one. That being said, Dotant out in space scoring two more points would have extended access to that triple word score. I still think it's probably worth it, Ben. Yeah, um, to be completely fair, I might have been too scared to play Doton against Dave because I was only about 95% sure it was a word. Yeah, that's a thing too, right? Like your word knowledge seems to, um, when you're when you're playing a player like Dave, you start to doubt yourself on words that against practically anybody else you would play confidently. So um, that's another, you know, Dave doesn't need any more advantage than he already has by being such a good player. But uh, at, at that level, you're often getting extra breaks from your opponent when they uh, when they have those uh, crises of confidence, so to speak. And we're going to see Vow be played, which is kind of, uh, that seems like clearly the best play for Dave here to get some points, but it makes an A hook that Bob may be able to use. Um, I'm sure there's some good stuff. He missed Dotant, but maybe he'll play Actant. I think that's probably the right spot uh, mm, nice. for him. So that would be... Yeah, a couple spots as Muffin with Tentacle. Hello, Muffin. Hello, 14 Domino. Hello, Mitsurugi. Nice to see all of you guys in the chat. Um, yeah, Actant and Avow looks very strong for Bob here. Oh, no. Is he? I'm Okay, so <laughs> what do we make of this? Yeah, what do we make of this? Is he considering I think playing all of this? I think he's considering playing Tact. Okay. Tact would be solid, of course, um, not quite as good due to the much lower score of that play. It is uh, actually you, kind of a nice leave on this board. Um, it sets you up nicely to potentially bingo next turn, making Azo and Tip. That's true, but, yeah. But um, you know, I would definitely prefer Actant just by sheer score. Yeah, you can notice the C of Actant, if you play with a vow, is going to hit that double letter score. So, all right. Instead, Bob plays Takan, which is a valid word, but I don't love the choice. I think if he was going to play there, mm -hmm. I would have preferred Tact anyway yeah. to keep a much better leave there. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's, yeah, totally what do you think? Why he didn't do that. Um, he had it on his rack and could just be nerve, first game nerves. Um I would much rather just keep ANT on my rack. That's a very strong leave, especially with Azo, as I as you said. Mentioned. Yeah, that Azo hook um, would have been a really, really nice place to keep an A in the leave, as you indicate. So, uh, of course, that's going to give Dave a really nice place 
to play unmixed yes. through the end of TechCon. So it's funny, isn't it, how sometimes you can make a play that might not be the right play, and it doesn't really cause much of a ripple in the game, and other times you can give your opponent a massively better play than they would have otherwise had, and this seems to be the latter here as Dave gets a really nice 44-point mm -hmm. score. What Obviously, do we think about the, the T-hook on this? So Unmix does take a T hook. Is Bob going to have the confidence to play that here? Because he has two T's. What do you think? Um, I'm not 100% sure. I didn't see it initially. One of, the, one of the disappointing things about that T hook is if you're even a little bit unsure, you're not going to take it just because I don't think you could really use the U when you play there. Okay, he has Lotto set up, so I think he's looking at Lotto and Unmixed, which is probably the best play here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. You could, if you wanted to leave the L off just so that you ensure that you keep one consonant in your leave, you could just play Auto here. Lotto is basically the same. You get three more points, yeah. but you have to use your last consonant. Seems like a pretty reasonable trade to me. Nice yeah, job by Bob. Three points here. Good play by Bob here. We like that option for him. And uh, Dave is getting closer. He's got more of a mixture of consonants and vowels here. He's done with those V's and W's and U's, but he still doesn't. I don't think he's drawn an E yet, which is uh, that, you know, very useful tile for bingoing. No E's on uh, the board yet, even. Wow. Okay. So Bob's drawn one E, but no, as you say, no E's played. So uh, we're likely to see a bunch of them be drawn and played in a hurry at some point here. Um, so, all Dave right. Has a bunch of options that you can play making as of this turn. Play bald if he wants to shout me out. Um, <laughs> you can also just play like BAC if he wants to do something a little more defensive. Doesn't float anything out there. Well, this is where if you had your wig, we could cut back to you and, and show that you, you really, you truly aren't bald, but that's okay. Maybe during one of the breaks. Um, so, um, yeah, that does seem like the only place that's really useful for scoring. Meanwhile, looking over at Bob's rack, his EU leave has drawn a very unwieldy set of letters to go with it. And uh, I think I don't even know what Dave can really play that's going to give Bob a good place to do much after um like if for example if dave plays bald as you suggested i'm not even sure he can reach that that rob robert can respond by reaching the open triple that will be there can he i, I don't know it's going to be tough with those letters so um close game in the early going of course but uh, Dave feels like he maybe he has a narrow lead and his letters are slightly better. It feels like he is in position to maybe win the race to get the first bingo down. Um, so we'll see. Let's see. Any other uh, ancient cosmographer says kind of weird out lot isn't in yet. See that all the time in a real estate context. Huh? I haven't seen that word before. Yeah, I haven't seen it myself. A lot of, a lot of those... Um, job specific words aren't don't really make it into the dictionary or take a long time to jalapic one hello nice to see you as well that's another uh long time scrabble player and uh friend of mine uh james curley not to dox everybody that appears in the chat but i don't think james minds um see you uh, i'm sure he will complain about it now that you mentioned that yes but. exactly um so yeah, Maybe Dave's taking a here. while. He, yeah, I was gonna say this is surprising. It's you know these types of moves are interesting because really almost all of the options here are going to be in that spot on top of Zo making Azo, or maybe he's considering some making DZO that's possible, but I really don't, I think mostly he wants to play something starting with BA there or maybe CA. Um, he yeah, just has to if you know figure out all the different options and try to come up with one that has the attributes he wants here you could also just be considering zoa plays um but I, I don't think there's really anything there 
It's worth doing. True. Play long with something like Canid. Um, but looks like he's going to go with back. Uh, AC. One, hmm. one of the nice things that he could have done was zap his L with Lazo, but I like this. And Bob immediately going to respond with M O U T, which is something I was considering for him. Yeah. With, uh, oh, but, but wait, is that, I'm not sure that's valid. Isn't it M O T U? Is the oh, word? Yes, that is correct. Um, so Dave, yeah, Dave instantly picks him off here. So that was like, I would have had to think about that a little bit. And uh, Dave also drew the K to hook his back play, which is kind of funny. <laughs> um, but uh, very quick response by Dave here, challenging off this word, or rather non-word. And Dave's going to bingo here, and this could turn to – this could get ugly quick. Um he is? I don't see where he's... Oh, Tinkled. <laughs> yes, I see it now. Um, yeah, Tinkled, that's a word that uh, I, I would say I've heard of before. So there we go. Wow. Um, big swing here for sure as Dave's play of Tinkled drawing the K. And if I'm if I'm Bob, I'm going to think to myself, wow, that's so clever. What a good K setup he just made. <laughs> but of course, that's uh, we know better. But you can see, wow, the swing there is enormous. Instead of Bob uh, somehow managing to keep pace, instead he's taken a zero. He has to deal with this ugly rack for a second turn. And Dave goes up huge in uh, game one of the Crescent City Cup. So Dave off to a great start here for sure. Um, and Dave's already the favorite in this game, sort of in an even game. Now he's up by well over 100 with Bob having a rough rack. So this is going to be a pretty huge mountain to climb for Robert Lynn to get back in this game, but we'll see. Um <laughs> He plays Gaudi, which that looks like the best he can do here, getting rid yep. of one of his two U's and his Y, his G. A lot of that Drek on the rack comes off with this play, so that makes sense to me. But again, still down by well over 100, and Dave's rack is excellent, Ben. Yeah. Um, it is Scrabble. Anything can happen. Um, I don't. Nothing immediately really jumps out to me as great plays for Dave. Yeah, he is going to, um, I don't know, I agree that I don't see anything that is going to be a crusher here for him. Um, it's worth noting um, that there is a nice kind of sneaky S hook parallel to the T of Tekan in the Collins lexicon, ST. St. That is a word. So the S's are... Nice to keep here for that reason, because if you draw a seven ending in an S, it seems like that's very unlikely to be obstructed. Hey, Lux, hey Luckbox, Lind. Uh, yep, Cats and Kinder's response there. Um, we are going to be split on Saturday and Sunday between uh, the two lexicons, and we'll see what happens on Monday. I think the focus on Monday will be we'll start with Collins, and if there's any kind of resolution in that division, we'll shift back to NWL. Um so hopefully everybody gets a little taste of what they're looking for here. Yeah, tricky move. It feels like um, the game's being played pretty fast. I think of Dave in general, Ben, as being a pretty fast player, it, just in the sense of whenever there's a move that's obviously the best move on any given turn, he is so fast at finding that move and playing it. So he tends to play quickly in my experience, but... Uh, uh, I think he's starting to be a very deliberate player. Um, <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, maybe it's just because I'm a fast player. But. Yes, you are. Yeah, it could be because I tend also to be a little slow. And he plays Sod here. I actually kind of like this. Um, this gets a bunch of points for him here. Um, it somewhat obstructs a relatively easy sevens line parallel to the E&D of Tinkled. I think it mostly just scores really well here. There's not very many other plays that score... This one yep. gets 34 points, and that's probably the most he can get here. One so, other option I was looking at, um, if you wanted to keep the E 
was Wads, W A D D S. It's in the same spot. True, but true. This is, this is a fine play. Yeah, this does look pretty good. Um, yeah, nice and closed. Going yeah. Up and you can see Dave's drawn uh, a very, very flexible rack with a bunch of seven letter words in there. Uh, for those watching in the chat, if you, uh, this is an opportunity to see if you can find some. I think even, yeah. even novice players might be able to find one or two seven letter words in there. Just take a guess, use those ERS uh, suffixes, and, and see if you can come up with anything. Um, Bob's in trouble here he just doesn't have very yeah. good letters um not sure what's gonna help him feel yeah. like he has a chance here i get i mean well, it's just, not gonna be dave's play um because he has bingos in several spots yeah dave's definitely bingoing next turn um hit that there you go nicely done uh womble isc absolutely landers something like landers will play in a couple different spots well it'll play with uh, just that ST hook off of Takan, like I said. Snarled, there you go. So finding a bunch of them here. Snarled, um, not sure where that necessarily would fit, but there's definitely other other bingos that are going to fit. So, Yes, um, the one that I see right now is Relands, which is going to land very nicely parallel to Sod. Very nice, yeah. He'll play that. Um, making a bunch of three let oh it's gonna score a lot of points too <laughs> yes yeah uh so dave is uh, this is no surprise it, this is not going to be dave's first blowout victory in scrabble and it won't be the last he is incredibly precise any mistake you make he's apt to punish quickly i do like this play for bob just to get three of those vowels off of his rack and score a few points i think that was probably image by bob was likely his best choice there but we are going to see Dave bingo relatively quickly in response to increase his lead even further. Hello to official good father in the chat. Nice to see you. Uh, I'm doing good. I'm here with Ben Schoenbrunn. I think he's doing good too because we love watching high level Scrabble at Crescent City Cup, Ben. Yes, we do. It's almost as much fun as playing high level Scrabble at Crescent City Cup. <laughs> yeah. Um, I um I think I would give the edge to Relands. I think that just scores more. Yeah, amazingly, Relands actually scores 85 points to Islanders 80. So not only are you getting five more points for all the hooks alongside of Sod, you also avoid putting an S out in the upper right corner of the board, which we know that you know it's not as dangerous. Well, well as... Islander doesn't do that. Oh, right. Puts an R there. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Totally. Um, uh, and are still not the brain fart. Um, it's the five points really that we like about this. Yeah. Um, so there we go. Nicely spotted here. Um, and uh, Dave is up now by 200 plus. Um, yeah, it's uh, that's a lot. Yes, that is a lot. That is turning into insurmountable territory. What is your reaction then when you get a win like this early on um, in a well, tournament, 200 plus points over a solid opponent? How does, I mean, that's, that's a pretty ideal outcome, of course. Um, well, to be, do you want my honest answer or my, <laughs> my politically like, correct my, my honest answer is like, I kind of just stopped thinking about the game and I'm like, okay, one, the, one down. <laughs> Um, um yeah i mean that's there is absolutely benefit to that right as uh muffin yeah. with tentacle predicted that blank draw before it happened of course um and to answer that question gideon we are not uh on site we are remote calling in and watching the action along with you guys kind of um brush yeah. is the play there i was thinking maybe he'll try to play something with delph um, yeah, something overlapping. He could have been super aggressive with like, something like Earth yeah. or Feu. Um, and my methods would have paid off here because Dave has pretty easy bingo here. I'm not sure if there's anything better than Overage. Yeah, I mean this um, seems like at the very least Overage will play 
alongside that T of Tekan in a very safe way. Um, yeah, Gideon, don't worry. We have NWL coming in the afternoon. So Saturday and Sunday will be split between uh, the two lexicons, and we'll see where we're at on Monday. So there will be something for everybody on this stream if you are patient. Um, but overage is an NWL word, and it will play pretty easily. I think Dave is going to play it on the left side of the board here to continue this massive blowout. So Ben had just said that he kind of checks out in that first game, which I think is completely fair. These tournaments Sorry. are these tournaments are marathons, right? Like um, it's you got to pace yourself if you want to be in good mental condition by the end. So if you get a game early on that you don't have to think too hard, that that helps you not only in the scoreboard because you get that nice big tiebreaker when you have the same number of wins as uh, somebody else. The tiebreaker is the margin of victory in your games. So, of course, Dave is going to be almost certain to be in first place after this round with the sheer size of the win he's about to record. But um, oh dear. It, could, it could be getting even bigger here. <laughs> um, uh, I don't... I see. I once played a phony that I won't say mm. through the M with this rack, but I don't know what's. Uh, I'm still looking to see if he's got an actual bingo here. Needless to say, if Dave has one, he's going to play it. But um, yeah, yikes, Ben. This is getting out of hand. Yes. So um for bob if bob makes his highest scoring play he can play his f again alongside del he can play the word delf there um and there's a few other you know a few other words he can play mm -hmm. in that spot um how many tiles left in the bag it looks like there are still 21 tiles in the bag <laughs> so there's still plenty of time um just frap is the play. Maybe uh, Bob just doesn't isn't thinking of of Delph or doesn't want to risk making a big hook. But he could have scored forty one points there, playing parallel to Relands. Um, yeah, br oh, good point. Luckbox Lind brush taking a Y. Yeah, yeah. If I think he's just gonna play like Rye here. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, so definitely still good chances for dave to i mean he could play rye he could even just play yo if he wants to really keep only good bingo tiles on his rack i think he has good chances of hitting a seven letter word hooking lar l-a-r um that seems like a pretty reasonable line to hit there's also the eye of image so he's got chances here to get another bingo down um but we'll see. I do expect a brushy play. Oh, I guess he could play Ivory through the V of Overage. That's kind of nice. Um, yeah, if you just want to get rid of some of those tiles. It um, scores deep. pretty well. It scores yeah. pretty well, and it leaves ER blank, which seems very strong. So, uh, I mean, yeah. interesting. He's doing, his, he's doing his due diligence here. Um, have to give him credit for that. Even on his last turn, he took a minute to look for something better than overage. Yeah, and he still, I mean, he definitely, I mean, as you said, you you considered him to be, okay, he is playing your suggestion of Rye. Seems fine. Um, but uh, you, you had said you felt like um, – Dave, Dave was a slightly deliberate player. I said I felt like he's a he's plays quickly. I feel like even when he doesn't, even when he uses up not that much time, he plays at a very relaxed, like calm pace. So maybe that's why I'm thinking he plays quickly because um, he never nice. seems rushed. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, that could definitely be part of it. Um, but he draws the cue. Bob immediately just plays EF at the base of the board there. I think um, Bob might be a little bit checked out here. Uh, I don't blame him. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, um, just just as we were talking about players being relieved to get this lead, if you start the tournament with the star loss, you just 
kind of want to put it behind you and move on and just say, okay, this game is a lost cause. I'm just going to make plays quickly and move on with my life. Yeah, it's very difficult to um... – it's it's not easy in either case to retain that focus and to do things like plan your most accurate end game and pre end game and all of that stuff. It is tricky though because there might be times later on in the tournament where like this might have been your best opportunity to get a ton of spread. You never know uh, when things can change quickly. So learning that skill of even in games like this to focus in and do your best to either win by as many as you can or lose by as little as you can. You can, you can thank yourself for that later on in a tournament. It's just really hard to get into that frame of mind when you're sitting there over the board, getting pummeled by a million points. Like, like Bob is here. Dave going to play QI, which is a little bit surprising to me. I would have been, I would have just grabbed the extra points by playing QIN making Larn, but yeah, I'm not sure what Dave was, uh, you know, had in mind. Just trying to be extra careful. As you can see, Bob is indeed playing extremely fast. He just plays P E G peg, and that is for sure going to give Dave. And you see, he is arranging his rack into a bingo from that P. So uh, going from worse to incredibly worse for Bob here. Yeah. Well, um, even though Bob is drawing a bingo himself, frap blocked enemies. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, so you can see that um, back over to Bob. He, we're getting close to the end of the game here. Dave up to 555 in this game, up by over 300 points in this game. So we were talking up Dave, but frankly, I don't think either of us, Ben, would have would have predicted no, this I, I, level of blowout. You know, Bob is a is a quite competent, strong player. So this yeah, is I, really said, this game could have gone either way. Yeah. Um, so Dave, uh, his Dave is uh, you know announcing his presence on the scene here with a pretty gargantuan win uh, to start things off, and we'll see. It's possible we'll get to see him again um, because typically in that early going, you do see the top seed um, play a bunch in the first few games of the tournament, and Dave is that top seed for this event. So if you're Bob here, um, not 100% sure what you do. You do have good bingo tiles. There are two tiles in the bag right now. That is painful. Um, so it's going to be either Bob will want to play one or two tiles off here. He has the last S. It could be he'll try to set that up somehow. You could just play like as on. Get for could a do one that. And Yep, for sure. You could do that. There's definitely a few things you can draw here, I think. Well, I guess it would be nice to have some backup draws through the eye of image because Dave is going to do his best to block off the N column here. That seems to be the best bingo spot on the board currently. So if Bob doesn't uh, open a new space, Dave may be able to simply block that and uh, secure even more spread here. Um, so yeah, you know, this happens. Um, oh, we, we're gonna have 20 games of streaming coverage here. Uh, typically uh, in Scrabble, I don't know, something like, you know, between 15 and 15% 15 and of games that you play in Scrabble are a little bit of a blowout one way or another. This is on the one percenter end of things right like one percent of the time between skilled players will you see a 300 point margin like this something like yeah that. Like even for dave i feel like this is probably at least one or two percent but uh yeah this uh bob looks pretty unfazed you know he's been around the block here in scrabble this sort of thing it happens one way or another in your favor and against you every so often I think Bob is pretty uh, – I don't imagine him to be somebody that ever gets that upset about even really bad luck happening to him in his games. So um, he'll probably shrug it off. 
um, and uh, move on. But of course, he'll do it with uh, quite the deficit in the uh, spread column, which again, if you're watching and that, that word is unfamiliar to you, that's just our word for um, the cumulative margin of victory in all of your games that we use as a tiebreaker. So if Ben and I are playing and we're each undefeated, which at, this at, you know what, we yeah. can just <laughs> use the real scenario that this happened. Oh I, I was playing a tournament recently where Ben, my co-commentator here was also playing. And after the first day of play, I was nine and oh plus 900. So I had beaten all nine of my opponents by combined 900 points and I was still in second place because Ben had beaten all nine of his opponents by over a thousand points. And that was very rude of you to do, Ben. Yeah, it wasn't the nicest. Um, that was one of my more insane days of Scrabble, but not here talking about me. We're here to talk about these players. True. Um, and uh, yeah, Dave's going to be in, in good shape to win those tiebreakers here after this game. Yeah. Yeah, if you get a few of these games, it can make the world – like sometimes that just is the difference between winning a tournament and losing a tournament. So, yeah, I'm just thinking about maybe Bob should try to empty the bag here. Like if he were to play something like EN and Dele and Dan to set up his S um, – but also to try to draw two tiles that give him multiple bingos through the eye of image and then in the new spot that he's created. Maybe that's an idea here. Um, he could also just play ERA and a Guti for as high a number of points as he can get. Again, though, if you're emptying the bag against Dave Wiegand, he's going to know exactly yep. how to counter whatever you have. So you need to draw... If you're going to get a bingo here for for Bob, you got to draw something that fits in two spots or maybe play only one tile to confuse him cuz Dave is really really good in these scenarios as well. Bob taking his time here, he wants he wants that bingo. As in, it would yeah. be nice, right? Like all of the spread all those spread points are created equal so that if he can get, you know, 60 or 70 of them back in this game, maybe next game Bob will be the one winning by 300 and everything will uh, sort of work out. Um, um question in the chat how often do experts script your tracking that question was for Will, but um it, um it, it really just varies from person to person. Ideally, you should be getting it right every game. Um, sometimes it's less important, like in a game like this for Dave, it's not as important to have it perfect, but it, it's just one of those things where there's no real upside to doing it correctly. There's only downside to doing it wrong. Yeah. Um, I would say to answer that personally, for my for my experience, how often do I screw up my tracking? Um, I have a pretty good system, but I would say still at least once or twice a tournament, I have to go back and retrack something just because it's so funny, right? Like the act of tracking tiles is not that complicated. No. I, I feel like it, this is a thing across all of scrabble like many many skills in scrabble are not all that complicated in and of themselves but the fact that you are doing so many yeah. of them at once in every game is why there starts to be slippage in those areas um, yes Absolutely. 14 domino think, says i'm once. not an expert <laughs> which he obviously is um yeah sorry ben go ahead um thing about tracking is you could do it perfectly for the entire game and then it only takes one turn to to screw you up you have to like go back find that turn luckily i'm a fast player so if i make a mistake which i often do i usually have time to go back and retract the game yeah also, so that's professional that... tip for all of you just carry an extra score sheet for every game you may need it don't find yourself in just one score sheet. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. So I think um, the scary thing is when you know you have a tracking error and you don't have time to retrack the game, that is not a good feeling. Um, realizing that you're going to have to wing it here <laughs> quickly. Okay, so there we go. So that was sort of the idea that I had uh, had in mind for Bob here. He's elected to play only one tile. The tricky thing about this, though, is that he's made it possible for Dave to block it with any number of hooks here because this Dan takes a G hook, it takes a T. So it's, it's going to be easy for Dave to just block this, I think. He can just play Thug, and that really makes it difficult um, for Bob to score. He could also play Ought or something yeah. like that to score even more, although that would make a sevens lane in return. It would um, also just leave II, which is not ideal. That's true. But if he's looking to just, you know, be hell bent on making sure that Bob doesn't bingo again. Yeah. Um, so the pool, I can actually, um, I, we have the ability to show the pool. Um, it's not really that critical in this scenario, but from Dave's perspective, here is the pool. Um, I'll just paste it in the chat. So you can see C line and alien knee are both available, but it doesn't look like there's anything through the eye of image. Um, so that's, I think this is going to be, he's going to be all in on blocking that L A R E play. Um, um I guess the problem with all is that it gives back the lion Oh yeah, no, it get, that's true. Yeah. It could give that back too. So, uh, I was thinking that something like thug would be, yeah, or, or, or thig, yeah, thig to avoid uh, having two eyes looks like a, and it looks like Dave will play that here, which looks very clever. And he spotted it nearly immediately too. So. So after thig, Oh, we have a nice little debate here. Um, even in chess, Nigel would be, uh, if this was, <laughs> well, like, well, hold on. Are we saying that if the win rate in Scrabble and the luck factor in Scrabble were uh, were the same as chess, that Nigel would only be at 2,400? I'm not sure I agree with that, right? Like, how could he not be, like, the Magnus Carlsen level? Uh, but maybe I'm misunderstanding. Um, I guess one question would be, like, what would Hasty Bot be? Yeah, it's a good question, right? So Hasty Bot, the very, very powerful and hasty, <laughs> uh, quick playing um, bot at Wogles.io, another uh, wonderful site that I myself use often. Um, but, yeah, the oh, – hold on. Let me get this play of Thig in. Um, that bot only has has no ability to understand board dynamics or anything like that, and yet it still beats all but the most extremely experienced and skilled human players, which is simultaneously kind of scary but also amazing. Um, I feel like it's scary because it just shows you how much that simple play finding is such an important skill in Scrabble. Um, I don't know. How do you feel about that, Ben? Um, I, I agree. I just feel that if you're going to master anything in Scrabble, you should master skill, like play finding. And I guess word and word. Yeah. Play yeah, finding, can, which of course, word knowledge goes into that. You got to know the words to find them. So it's just so um, important to see your best play every turn and be sure that it's a valid play. Um, yeah, it is a scary. Oh, does Dave need his score updated? Yes, he does. Sorry about that. Um, there we go. So this is the accurate score right now. 585 to 238. Jeez, that's pretty crazy. Um, Doesn't look like Dave has an outplay. Poor Dave. Yeah, it's terrible luck for Dave to not have an outplay here. I'm so, my heart bleeds for him. Um, but yes, he'll. I'm sure that. Uh, I mean, this is not. It's kind of tricky from Bob's perspective with all these vowels 
Uh, it should be very doable for Bob to go out in two turns. We definitely see that a lot um, in end games in Scrabble, where the player that has um, that you know that goes into the end game first. So Dave, for example, was the one who played Thig. He drew the last tile out of the bag. That puts Bob in position to play two end game plays to only one for Dave. And in much, much closer games than this, by far closer games than this, that is sometimes the difference between winning and losing the game. Who gets two turns in the end game to their opponent's one? Um, but the same principles actually apply in pretty much every game. So for Bob here, he should be trying to set up himself to play two moves, one after the other, make sure that he doesn't give Dave a place to play all of his letters and end the game immediately. And as long as he doesn't do that, Bob will come away with a couple more points of spread. Of course, it doesn't feel like much when you're losing by 350 points or whatever, but uh, that's, you know, that's still the objective here from, Bob, yes. from Bob's POV. And he's taking his time here. Um, just three minutes left on the clock for him. Bald bath is almost over. Hopefully the next game will be a little bit closer. I would think it's a good bet that the next yeah, game will be closer. <laughs> Maybe we can put a Twitch prediction. Do you think the next game's margin of victory will be larger or smaller than this one and see and see who bets uh i should do we should i'll, I'll try to put up some actual predictions and stuff for you guys any suggestions for things that you want to gamble on during the games like uh what the blanks will be designated consonants or vowels or something like that you know margin of victory what do you guys want to gamble on we can make that happen for you we are so unregulated <laughs> True. Um, yeah, I could always do some margin of victory ones. Wow, muffin with tentacle with pedunculation. Um, what what made you think of that? Um, 14 Domino says we haven't even touched on what is possible in Scrabble. Yeah, I was, you know, I was listening to a podcast about um, the, the folks that uh, that created an AI to play poker. Like, I think it was some of the same groups of people that, you know, made chess playing AI and go AI as we see seam is the play. Yep, this is what, what Bob needs. It will. Yeah, that's a good wow. play. It will offer out plays in multiple spots on this board. Now, if I'm Dave, I'm just thinking about getting 15 points here, so I could say I scored 600. Yeah, is he gonna get? Possible. Is he gonna get to 600? It doesn't look like it. Um, <laughs> hey, hey, Tommy. Tom, well, I'm not sure how. I'll just say Tommy. Um, but uh, yeah, the. Um, Tommy is one of the funnier chess chatters that I've seen pretty much. Um, it makes me laugh every time I'm watching a chess stream. Thanks. Thanks for stopping by the, the Scrabble stream, Tommy. But uh, yeah, I mean, we know that the ch chess AI is very advanced, um, you know, stockfish, et cetera, playing at a 3,200, 3,300 level. The Scrabble AI that we have now is not yet stronger than the best human players, I would say, is fair to say. Like maybe you can count on the finger of, of one hand players that you would say, yeah, this guy's going to beat the best Scrabble AI. There's not a lot of them out there. I myself think that I'm right on the edge. I don't know if I'm one of those players, probably not. Um, it's really hard, obviously, but as 14 Domino says, there is upside for the AI, right? Like we can, there's stuff yeah. that AI will eventually do um, that uh, is going to be impossible for human beings to. Yeah, you can only think about so many things at once in 25 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for fun predictions, you could try saying like total number of bingos. That's a good one. Um, all right, Dave plays oil 
which happens to be his highest scoring endgame play, apart from just dumping his L onto AZO, which this works out better because he's playing more tiles. So this looks like his best choice here. And Bob has a number of options to play off the rest of the tiles and get out of this game, and hopefully he can leave it behind him. Um, just move on. This happened. It was terrible. Move on. Yeah, that's all you can do. And if you're Dave, I feel like he's going to move on as well and not take yeah. too much. You know, he's not going to get too high or too low after this game. If I, I'm guessing if I went up to Dave and asked him, like, what happened in game one, he would shrug his shoulders and he would say, like, well, I drew well. You know, like he wouldn't he wouldn't be elated. He would just be like, well, that happened. I'm going to move on and continue to be the monster of Scrabble that I am though he wouldn't say that yeah um, um yeah i i'm not really the type to take too much pleasure in these games it's, it's just not as satisfying as winning a really close game where you have to battle every turn for every point but you'll take them you will take them if you get if you get 20 of these games that's great you won the tournament yeah um but again, uh, if you're if you're hoping for you know more tightly contested battles coming up, the odds are very very good that that's coming. This is not this is highly idiosyncratic at this level to see uh, a game of this. Uh, so let me get the final score in. Um, Alien for Bob, the final play, getting a couple extra points from. Uh, Dave, and there you have the final, at least what we have. The players can technically um, agree to a score that's different from what we have. There you see the handshake. Yep, and you see Dave on his phone. Shit. He's actually entering the results of the game. Um, True. One of the nice things about Coco is that they've gone paperless for, not for score sheets, but for, but for entering all of their paperwork. Yeah, I had my first experience with that at the Word Cup um, this past year in Naperville, Illinois, and it was a very nice, seamless system. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, oh, to, to the debate that 14 Domino and, and Alex is having in the chat, I remember now. I remember that uh, the podcast I was listening to, it was talking about a poker bot, but it was also talking about a bot that plays diplomacy with like natural language processing. So like a bot that actually talks to you and, and plays diplomacy and tells you like, hey, let's make an alliance against whatever the different nations. And it actually was able to beat experienced diplomacy players, which is that's I mean, we can talk scary. about you could talk about like chat GPT and stuff like that, which is. I mean, yeah, diplomacy bot. Yeah, I was so fascinated by that. So, um, multi multiplayer games where politics are involved are always very scary to me because I can't count on myself to play optimally. And I can't count on my opponents to play optimally. Something like sometimes things just get personal, but when there's a bot, there's no personal aspect to it. They're just going to see the percentages everyone has and maximize its own yeah um i just think it's yeah it's just so interesting a hasty bot that trash talks you and lies exactly right. <laughs> oh my, my God. question for you domino is why haven't you programmed hasty bot to do that yeah, I don't know. Maybe bigger fish to fry, but I mean, Hasty Bot could at least trash. You could have some canned trash talk, right? That would be pretty amazing when it bingos on you, or you know, different different sounds when uh, when it challenges you off. So, all right, the players are squaring up the board. Um, I think, uh, oddly enough, that game took most of the time of both of the players there, so it's possible we won't have that long of a wait to get our second round game. I think the odds are decent that it's going to be 
<laughs> Dave Weekend, as you can see, um, we were talking about Dave potentially playing bald as uh, shots fired against Ben, but Ben is proving emphatically that uh, that is not the case with the beautiful uh, headgear that he has there. Um, so, um, yeah, um, I don't know. Not much to say about that first game, Ben, except it's only one game for both players, and it's a long road from here on out. Yep, um, Bob stumbled out in the beginning, and that may have just made all the difference. Yeah. Um, so I think what we will do is uh, potentially take a, a small break, or do um, not sure if that's what we're. Okay. Yeah. Let's yeah, let's fine. take a short break, and uh, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes with round two from the twenty twenty three Crescent City Cup. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 